Hello everyone, this is Leah Whitehorse from Lua Astrology and in this recording I'm going to be talking about the upcoming Mercury retrograde. So this is going to be Mercury retrograde in Libra. Just to get some dates out of the way first so that you are aware of the full cycle of this Mercury retrograde period. Mercury entered the shadow zone on the 6th of September. It stations retrograde on the 27th of September. It will station direct on the 18th of October and Mercury will exit the shadow zone on the 3rd of November. The entire cycle will take place in the sign of Libra and Libra is a sign that is commonly associated with relationships. So this can be personal relationships, romantic relationships, or it can be business relationships. It's all concerning the other. And this is about the communication, Mercury, between us, Libra. Typically, as Libra is a sign that is ruled by Venus, so Venus is the love goddess, Typically, Mercury in Libra is generally thought of as smooth talking. This is the kind of transit normally where we would think of the other person first before we speak. We make sure that we listen to the other person. We're doing a little bit of smooth talking to just kind of sweet talk them, bring them around to our way of thinking. Sometimes it can be a little bit of that going on, but generally it's good humoured, it's good natured, it's diplomatic. We're of a mind to compromise with one another, to listen to one another. So yeah, normally this is a nice transit. I'm just going to read you some headlines that I've noticed over the last week or so. The PM's botched diplomacy has reverberated across the Atlantic, undermining Western solidarity on the challenge of China's rise. France has said it is recalling its ambassadors in the US and Australia for consultations in protest at a security deal which also includes the UK. President Joe Biden refused to take questions from American reporters before his aides chivied them away from a meeting with Boris Johnson. Members of the press were startled by the aggressiveness of the White House communications team. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesman said the pact seriously undermined regional peace and stability. What is going on? This is not really Mercury and Libra, is it? Or is it? Because Mercury is actually in a long square with Pluto. This square began on the 12th of September and it's not going to leave the orb of this square until the 9th of October and then we will revisit the square again between the 27th of October and the 9th of November. Whilst Mercury is busy squaring Pluto, it is also opposing Eris. Eris is in Aries, Pluto is in Capricorn, we have the ongoing Pluto Eris square. So basically what's going on is Mercury is repeatedly triggering this very challenging aspect that has been running through the year. It's formed a backdrop to everything that's been going on. And this is why we have this very undiplomatic kind of situation happening that we're seeing exploding in all our communications with our leaders, like Pluto can be associated with the, the powers that be, those people, those governments that are in control. No wonder they're struggling to find agreement at the moment. And for us personally, Mercury square to Pluto in particular, can really bring out a feeling of mental weight, mental intensity. There is a lot that's going on out there in the world. I mean, I don't know about where you are, but certainly in the UK, it's pretty intense here right now because we've got 
massive issues with food, like food shortages that are possibly coming up and are already sort of starting to hit the shelves. The um, gas prices have just gone through the roof. And there's a lot of worry. There's a lot of concern. You know, despite all the stuff with COVID, it really feels like we're we're kind of in this crisis mode. And then, of course, out there in the world as well, there's just been a earthquake over in Australia. There's a volcano that's kicking off in La Palma. So it does feel like there is so much happening. And Eris, Eris over there in uh, Aries. She is busy kind of, you know, exposing the elephant in the room. She is triggering. She's triggering a lot of this um, stuff that's happening and is kind of making us aware that there are problems. There are some problems here. In fact, if I look at the chart for the moment when Mercury stations retrograde, and Mercury is going to be at 25 degrees, 28 minutes of the sign Libra. So it's pretty close to the, the square to Pluto, which is on 24 of uh, Capricorn and um, the opposition to Aries, which is 24 of Aries. At that moment of the Mercury retrograde, Aries is actually going to be sitting with an asteroid called uh, Paulovia or Pavlovia. It's actually derived from the, the name Pavlov. So you might remember the name Pavlov is connected to the experiment with the dogs. So Pavlov got the dogs to salivate every time they heard a bell. Um, so obviously this speaks of triggers and in the sign of Aries, it's super triggery. Um, so we really get this feeling that we're being triggered by this discordance. So Aries, this discordance that is out there in the world with other people. And also just looking at this chart as well, I'm also noticing that Venus has just passed in opposition with Uranus. So Venus is the dispositor of Mercury. The Venus opposition to Uranus playing into this whole story of Mercury retrograde. And Venus opposite Uranus tells us people can be very unpredictable. We don't always know what other people are going to do. And that can be a problem for Venus in Scorpio because Scorpio likes to have tight control over things, much like Pluto, Pluto, the ruler of Scorpio, the co-ruler of Scorpio. So we've got a situation here where Mercury in Libra wants to connect, to be diplomatic, to be nice, to make friends. But the square to Pluto suggests that there is a struggle for a start because somebody else maybe has the power or we're talking about issues that are very, very difficult, that are intense. Maybe it's sort of having to speak about some truths that we'd rather not talk about, especially with Mercury and Libra. Libra is a sign that you know, wants to have everything aesthetically appealing. And Pluto is a planet that's not really concerned with that. Pluto wants to know the truth. And so we may have to listen to some hard truths, especially with Eris involved, because she's not going to shut up anyway. You know, she, she's just like, look, the dogs are salivating here. The bell is ringing. How much more do I have to ring your bell before you actually recognize there's something wrong in this picture? Something needs to be done here. Something needs to be discussed or recognized here. And it's, it's difficult to navigate around that. And in a way, we're not meant to navigate around it. We're meant to work with it. We're meant to find a way to maybe agree to disagree if possible. Um, because obviously if we start to sort of fight with one another, that's not, not going to get us anywhere. So we've got to find a way through some of the conflicts, some of the difficulties, the discordance, the triggering, the power games, the power plays, all of this stuff. We need to find a way to deal with this in a way that is truthful and honest and from the heart, remembering uh, Libra has got to be from the heart. Now, positively speaking, Mercury square to Pluto 
encourages us to get underneath the surface of things because Mercury in Libra can be very much kind of like being at a, a nice little party somewhere and everyone's just talking very politely with one another. It's like, hi, how are you? What do you do for a living? Oh, what do you do for a living? And nobody's talking about politics or sex or the news, you know, it's like, it's it feels like that. But Mercury square to Pluto is really saying we're ready to get underneath the surface of things and find out the truth. It can give us really greater ability to investigate and to research. It can actually help us to focus. So even though it's a hard square, we can get very, very focused with this kind of aspect. But there is also, of course, a shadow side as well, which means that sometimes we can become obsessed with the the information or the truth to the point where it's very hard to believe anything that we hear. And there is always this sneaking suspicion in the back of our minds so that we don't trust and this is the big problem, I think, with this Mercury retrograde or the challenge that the trust doesn't seem to be there. So one of the big things that we're reviewing around this time is how can we trust each other and how can we also trust ourselves? That's going to be a really big part of this Mercury retrograde because we need to really work on our listening skills and we need to really work on how we are processing that information that is coming through to us. What filters are we using here? Are we using the wrong filter for the information that's coming through? And it's likely that that filter is in some way connected with fear, Pluto, because things have been scary recently. Life has been, you know, very unpredictable, going back to Venus opposite Uranus recently. And we are scared, Venus in Scorpio, of losing money or losing love, feeling, you know, devalued or feeling alienated in some way. There's a lot of insecurity around right now, a lot of insecurity. And so some of what's happening in this retrograde period is tapping into those insecurities. And Eris is kind of nudging me as I say this, and she's kind of saying, well, that's the point. We need to address these insecurities because a lot of it is the root of the shadow that we are experiencing in the world right now. It's the root of all of the war and the aggression. It all stems from this deep insecurity so we have a lot of work to do with this Mercury retrograde. When Mercury stations retrograde, it will be sat beside Minerva, the asteroid Minerva, otherwise known as Pallas Athena. So Minerva is the Roman version of Pallas Athena. And Minerva, much like her counterpart, is the goddess of wisdom. Now, she's also, interestingly enough, a goddess that is associated with trade. So again, I kind of noticed the headline about the trade agreement or the non-existent trade agreement between the US and the UK. Also, this goddess is associated with the arts and specifically with strategy in war. She's a problem solver. So Mercury conjunct Minerva in Libra, stationing retrograde, there is a sense that we are having to re-strategize, rethink our strategy, tap back into, we could even say feminine wisdom, because we've also, as Mercury stations retrograde, got Mars here. We've got Mars conjunct the sun, in fact, in Libra. So that's a pretty feisty, direct aspect 
it feels quite almost like forceful because Mars is very, very motivated to make friends and influence people and be liked and be seen with the sun close beside it and be recognised. We really want to make these important friends and allies but we're going to have to do it in a different way. This is what Minerva is saying. We need to re-strategize. We, re we need to rethink. We need to renegotiate. And so this might be also in our own personal lives as well, that we need to renegotiate the balance of power in our relationships, whether, again, personal, business. So this can include your husband or wife, spouse, best friend, clients and colleagues even if you work closely with with a colleague at work a business partner anybody that you are in a close connection with there's something about looking at this balance of power and does it mean that one person is less able to speak their truth or communicate their ideas just to talk there's something along these lines that we need to be exploring. The Sabian symbol of Mercury as it stations retrograde is an eagle and a large white dove change into each other. So I think this symbol is giving us a, a very clear picture of what we need to try to do during this Mercury retrograde period. So if we think about these two birds, typically the dove is associated with peace, but the eagle is a bird of prey. The eagle, however, is also associated with having an amazing ability to see things. You can imagine the eagle flies very high up in the sky, but it swoops down and catches its prey effortlessly. And we speak about being eagle-eyed. Those are the people that really spot any tiny detail, particularly with Pluto involved, because this is like the archetype of the detective turning everything over and looking for clues. So we're looking for clues. But if we blend that symbolism together of the eagle and the dove, is it that we need to be aware of the openings for peace? Also, this symbol, because they are switching places, that is to what we need to do. We need to be able to step into each other's shoes. The eagle and the large white dove change into one another. This is rather like Venus opposite to Uranus. That's about perspective. Uranus always changes our perspective, turns things on their heads. And that's what we need to do during this time to be able to find agreement. We've got to step into one another's shoes. It doesn't mean that we have to completely agree with the other person, you know, and just sort of throw away all of our values or opinions or that kind of thing. But Sometimes we do need to be at least open to listening so that we can really understand where the other person is coming from because that then leads to the ability to see some kind of similarity with that person because with Pluto involved, Pluto is about extremes. And so what we can do is we can demonize one another, especially with Eris involved as well. We can demonize one another and that stops us listening. That always stops us listening. So this Sabian symbol says it's really important during this Mercury retrograde period to at least try to step into the other person's shoes so that we can hear one another and find a way to peace. So Mercury stations retrograde on this eagle, dove, Sabian symbol. The first aspect that Mercury makes in retrograde motion is on the 1st of October with the opposition to Eris and then on the same date this square to Pluto so we can see how tight that square between Eris and Pluto is. And then on the 4th of October 
Mercury will trine Jupiter. So this is kind of the helper. It also makes me feel like there's a sense that there are big stakes at play here. It's almost like there's there's a lot on the table. It's really it's really worth the work that we're doing during this Mercury retrograde because there's so much that that we could benefit from with Jupiter involved. So Jupiter is a very protective force. With Mercury trying to Jupiter, it can also say that it feels like we've got a lot to think about. There's a lot to think about, a lot to learn. Jupiter is traditionally the ruler of the natural ninth house associated with academic learning and pioneering into new places, broadening our horizons. So this is yet another symbol that tells us we need to open our minds in some way, shape or form and embrace these different ideas, different perspectives. There's going to be a new moon on the 6th of October, which I just wanted to bring into this reading because this new moon will actually be directly conjunct Mars and also conjunct Mercury. And the moon will, just after the new moon, it will then conjoin Mercury. So it'll be tr- a trigger for this Mercury retrograde. So this is important just to watch what is occurring around that new moon because it might start to give us an idea of what this whole situation is about, what this Mercury retrograde is about for us. On the 8th of October, Mercury will then sextile Juno. So remembering that these are repeating aspects. Mercury first made a sextile to Juno on the 8th of September. So it's possible we're revisiting, we're already starting to revisit what was happening at the beginning of September. Now we're starting to see there's an opportunity, the sextile, to come to an agreement, Juno, because Juno is about um, sort of relationships, which is sometimes called the marriage asteroid, which is also about contracts and commitment. So there is an opportunity here to find some kind of way forwards with one another. Juno is in Sagittarius, so what we kind of need to do is respect one another's beliefs. So this is the sign Sagittarius. With Sagittarius, there's a sense that beliefs are part of the picture. We all have a certain philosophy, a certain way of looking at life. And we do need to kind of hold space for that. Again, we don't have to agree with it, but we need to hold space for it. On the 9th of October, we meet the midpoint of this Mercury retrograde. And this is when the Sun will conjoin Mercury. And it's rather like Mercury is returning to source, returning to the light for instruction. Often this is a time when things become illuminated. The mind is illuminated by this conjunction. We become consciously aware of the dilemma, the problem, the difficulty, whatever it is, and perhaps start to get a hint of the solution to this issue that we've been dealing with. It's going to be a very potent conjunction this though because Mars is also going to be here as well just one degree away and so that makes this a triple conjunction between retrograde Mercury the Sun and Mars and Mars can bring in this energy of impulsiveness impatience because Mercury retrograde typically is a time when things don't happen in the time that we would like them to. We are delayed. There are delays in communications or there's misunderstandings, all the usual things that we say about Mercury retrograde. But now that Mars is involved, it's almost like we see the light, we get a hint of yes, this is the avenue we need to go down, or this is the thing that I need to say, this is the person that I need to talk to, whatever it is. And Mars is just gunning for it because Mars does not like to be delayed. 
So we have to be super aware around this time of any impulsiveness, this frustration. If we are frustrated, it's important that we kind of hold that thought, however difficult it is, and count to 10 before we react before we take action, remembering that Eris is um, sitting with uh, Pavlovia. And so we get that whole thing about feeling triggered and that's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable when we feel triggered and we want to take action. We want to confront it or we want to crush it one or the other with Pluto involved. But there is this kind of soft, insistent voice in the background that says, we must just be aware of our actions around this time. The Sabian symbol for the Sun conjunct Mercury is a retired sea captain watches ships entering and leaving the harbour. What a fabulous symbol. It's really giving us instructions again. So this person was once the captain. He was once a sea captain. He was once the one who would give the orders and tell people what to do and when to do it. But now he's retired. So he's just watching the ships coming in and out. We too need to know when to sit, watch and wait and when it's necessary to take the lead. So this symbol is really giving us a hint that despite the impulse to take action, to do something, to decide or to speak up, whatever it is, there is perhaps a need for us to just watch and see how this story is going to play out first. From there, Mercury will then actually conjoin Mars on the same day. So Mercury is going to meet the Sun and then will meet Mars. So it pretty much feels like the mind is on fire with Mercury being sort of stuck between the Sun and Mars. Now, Mercury conjunct Mars can be good for a quick thinking. It can be good for asserting our opinion or speaking up if necessary. It can be really great for doing some brainstorming if we need to, you know, do that to get through some, some ideas or some work. It can make us more confident in our speech. But as I said before, we can also be impulsive and the words that we say can become weapons because Mars is the god of war. So really the watch word around this time is patience, patience, patience. The other thing that I want to say about this triple conjunction between Mercury, Mars and the Sun is that basically what's happening is that Mercury is on the heels of the solar conjunction to Mars that actually happens on the 8th of October, which is essentially starting a new cycle, a new cycle of Mars. Um, Mars is now kind of far, far on the other side of the sun, far away from us, which also can have this sense of it's hard to truly get hold of, truly understand our motivations at this time. It's hidden within the glare of ego, within the glare of the sun. And so a lot of unconscious motivation might be coming out around this time or there is a danger of that if we aren't aware, if we're not kind of paying attention to our reactions and triggers. And also with um, the Sun and Mars in a conjunction with one another, that signals, like I said, this new start, this new cycle with Mars. And typically around that time, it is a time where we start to think about the goals, the things that we want to achieve next, the mission that we want to go on next. But with Mercury retrograde, whilst this is happening, it's almost as if it's saying, maybe we need to do some looking back to see whether our strategy in the past really worked or whether it was, you know, some a campaign that didn't work properly or 
you know, did we actually meet the goal that we set out to to achieve or did something else come from that? Did we end up in a different place from when we started? There's something about really exploring how we are going after what we want and whether what we want is actually in alignment with our true core self, our true identity. Moving on from this period, we get a few days break to incorporate some of that very heady energy of this triple conjunction. And then retrograde Mercury will trine Ceres. That's a softening influence. And now because Ceres is associated with nurturing and kindness and mothering, with Mercury trying to Ceres, we get this sense that our conversation is becoming more nurturing and kind. It, in, it invites us to speak kindly to one another, about one another, and kindly to ourselves as well, because sometimes we are internalizing all of this energy, especially with Mercury being retrograde, we can internalize all of this, and we can end up feeling angry with ourselves because we didn't see this or we didn't do that. So Mercury trying to series is just saying, you know, let's just soften these words, give ourselves some kind of food for thought, feed our minds with good information, with good news if we need to just switch off from the bad stuff that's going on. And yeah, just allow ourselves a little bit of breathing space. Ceres is in the sign of Gemini, by the way. Mercury will then sextile Venus. So we can really see we've, we've moved from this very high peak state with all of the square to Pluto in opposition to Eris. We go through all of that and then the conjunction to Mars. So it's kind of very warlike. And then as we come to the end of the Mercury retrograde period, there is a lull, this sense that we're starting to tap into the possibilities of a little bit more sweetness because Mercury sextile to Venus on the 17th of October really makes me feel like, and now we know that we can speak from the heart. Now we know that there is an agreement that's possible. Now we know how to talk to one another in a way that is kind. Now we can speak from the heart without fear, with Pluto involved. Mercury stations direct on the 18th of October. The Sabian symbol is a professor peering over his glasses at his students. So we certainly learned something by the end of this Mercury retrograde. And the fact that the professor is taking off his glasses makes me feel like by the end of this Mercury retrograde period, we are likely to see each other much more clearly than we did before. We're no longer seeing each other through this filter, this filter of, of beliefs and fears. We're starting to see people clearly, which in turn means that we're also seeing ourselves more clearly as well. There's still, as I mentioned, the, the sort of end of Mercury square to Pluto to come as Mercury slowly goes over the degrees that it's already covered before as it goes through the shadow zone at the other end of the Mercury retrograde period. So we do need to just watch around the 2nd of November when Mercury will oppose Eris again and square Pluto. But I think by this time, hopefully our thinking will have been transformed and any imbalance of power will have been addressed. This concludes my reading for Mercury Retrograde in Libra. I hope you found it helpful and I wish you many blessings on your path.